There you are. Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer at Christ the King Anglican Church. Today is Wednesday, November 29th. Our service begins on page 11 in the prayer book. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent, according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Together we say the Venite. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. I'll ask Sarah to lead us in the Psalms this morning as well as the reading. Uh, the Psalm appointed for today can be found on page 364 in your Book of Common Prayer, Psalm 75. We will read this responsibly by whole verse. Unto you, O God, do we give thanks. Indeed, unto you do we give thanks. Those who call upon your name declare your wondrous works. Surely, at the time which I appoint, I, the Lord, will judge according to what is right. The earth shakes with fear and all that dwell therein, but I, even I, have made firm its pillars. I say to the proud, you should not boast, and to the ungodly, do not lift up your horn. Do not lift up your horn on high, nor speak with a stiff neck. For help comes neither from the east nor from the west, nor yet from the wilderness or the mountains. For it is God who is the judge. He puts down one and lifts up another. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is foaming. It is fully mixed, and he pours it out. As for the dregs of it, all the ungodly of the earth shall drink them and drain them out. But I will magnify the God of Jacob and praise him forever and ever. All the horns of the ungodly will I break, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. And continuing with Psalm 76. In Judah, God is known. His name is great in Israel. At Salem is his tabernacle and his dwelling is in Zion. There he broke the arrows of the bow, the shield, the sword, and the weapon of battle. You are of more honor and might than the everlasting hills. The strong of heart have been despoiled. They have slept their sleep, and all those whose hands were mighty have lost their strength. At your rebuke, O God of Jacob, both the chariot and the horse lie stunned upon the ground. You, even you, are to be feared, 
and who may stand in your sight when you are angry? You caused your judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth trembled and was silent. When God arose to judgment and to help all the meek upon earth. The wrath of man shall be turned to your praise and the remnant of fierceness you shall restrain. Make a vow unto the Lord your God and keep it. All you who are round about him, bring gifts unto him who is worthy to be feared. He restrains the spirit of princes and is feared among the kings of the earth. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And our reading today <clears throat> is from continues from Acts, or in chapter 23, beginning with the 12th verse, a plot to kill Paul. When it was day, the Jews made a plot and bound themselves by an oath, neither to eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. There were more than 40 who made this conspiracy. They went to the chief priests and elders and said, we have strictly bound ourselves by an oath to taste no food till we have killed Paul. Now, therefore, you, along with the council, give notice to the tribune to bring him down to you, as though you were going to determine his case more exactly, and we are ready to kill him before he comes near. Now the son of Paul's sister heard of their ambush, so he went and entered the barracks and told Paul. <clears throat> Paul called one of the centurions and said, Take this young man to the tribune, for he has something to tell him. So he took him and brought him to the tribune and said, Paul, the prisoner, called me and asked me to bring this young man to you, as he has something to say to you. The tribune took him by the hand and, going aside, asked him privately, What is it that you have to tell me? And he said, The Jews have agreed to ask you to bring Paul down to the council tomorrow, as though they were going to inquire something more closely about him. But do not be persuaded by them, for more than 40 of their men are lying in ambush for him, who have bound themselves by an oath, neither to eat nor drink, till they have killed him. And now they are ready, waiting for your consent. So the tribune dismissed the young man, charging him, tell no one that you have informed me of these things. Paul sent to Felix, the governor. Then he called two of the centurions and said, get ready 200 soldiers with 70 horsemen, and 200 spearmen to go as far as Caesarea at the third hour of the night. Also provide mounts for Paul to ride and bring him safely to Felix the governor. And he wrote a letter to this effect, Claudius Lysias to his excellency, the governor Felix, greetings. This man was seized by the Jews and was about to be killed by them when I came upon them with the soldiers and rescued him, having learned that he was a Roman citizen. And desiring to know the charge for which they were accusing him, I brought him down to their council. I found that he was being accused about questions of their law, but charged with nothing deserving death or imprisonment. And when it was disclosed to me that there would, that there would be a plot against the man, I sent him to you at once, ordering his accusers also to state before you what they have against him. So the soldiers, according to their instructions, took Paul and brought him by night to Antipatris. And on the next day, they returned to the barracks, letting the horsemen go on with him. When they had come to Caesarea and delivered the letter to the governor, they presented Paul also before him. On reading the letter, he asked what province he was from. And when he learned that he was from Cilicia, he said, I will give you a hearing when your accusers arrive. And he commanded him to be guarded in Herod's praetorium. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The canticle this morning is found on page 84, and it is the Dignus S. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God, for you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God 
from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. Amen. And on page 20, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your spirit from us. Collect of the day. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Call it for grace. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Defend us by your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin nor run into any danger, and that guided by your Spirit we may do what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our prayer focus this morning is for our missionaries, and I invite prayers at this time. Holy Almighty Father, we thank you and praise your name for your love for us and your infinite mercy. I would lift up our missionaries to you this day and ask especially that you would be with Jean Johnson as she's away. Uh, guide her, protect her, give her your peace, and help her to be an effective missionary uh, where she is. Uh, and I just prayed for your loving kindness on the lady that she is uh, working with and that they would have a safe return. All in good time. Amen. Heavenly Father, I uh, lift up the supplies that are still needed by um, the, <clears throat> the missionaries that are um, uh, waiting to pack the backpacks for life quest. Um, I ask that um, the supplies come quickly. Uh, we've had to postpone the, the packing of the care kits, Christmas care kits, but um, we know that again, it's all in your good time. And so Lord, I ask that even though the, the time has been postponed for the packing, that there will be uh, plenty of people to take care of that and that these um, care kits will bless and 
bring others closer to you and bring them a peace and knowledge of love from others they don't even know. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, we <clears throat> we do thank you for uh, all of our missionaries, for Jean, uh, for LifeQuest, for Kairos and the prisons um, who have, praise God, uh, both in the men's prison and the women's prison have just had, for the first time in years, have had successful weekends and successful follow-ups just before Advent, which is a just the right time of year to have these weekends happen, have people be brought uh, to faith in you. Uh, and so we ask, Lord, that you would pour an extra measure of mercy and grace over those institutions and over those inmates uh, as they go into this season, which is always a, a hard season, both in and out of prisons for people, for new believers and that you would put a hedge of protection around them, uh, around their tender new faith and buoy them up, um, help them to grow and grow in their faith in you, their relationship with you. We ask you to uh, help all of the missionaries we support and those we do not yet know about, but which you mean to bring to mind for us. We thank you that you... Um, and brought such a sweet time of prayer to the bishop and many of us last night going into Advent reminded us that this is a time of year for us to be washed clean, washed clean of everything that does not serve you and made fresh uh, so that we can remember all the things you've done to for us, <laughs> always for us. And we ask, Lord, that you would touch the hearts. I ask that you would touch the heart of every single member of Christ the King, that you would make this Advent especially fresh, that you would touch the hearts of our priests and deacons and make this an especially wonderful year, that you would open us up to all the things you mean to have us do. You would show us what those things are and you would show us how to do them. All these things we ask in your name. Our service this morning continues on page 26 in the prayer book. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And together we say the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.